Always enjoy talking to this guy. He's with us on behalf of Pepsi and DraftKings. Both are giving you a free shot at $100,000 for getting uh, zero right with the DraftKings Zero Right Bracket Challenge presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar. We'll get to that in a second. His sons are big stars at uh, Columbus High School here in Miami. Uh, thank you for joining us, Carlos. How unreasonable are you watching them play? Are you somebody who uh, berates <laughs> referees? Uh, how, how how are you about uh, watching your sons play basketball? I try my, Dan, how you doing? Good to be on, by the way. I do my best just to be a dad and enjoy the game, but there are some times where I'll go talk to the ref at halftime. But for the most part, I just cheer them on. Do you ever tell the coach that the coach doesn't know what he's doing or any uh, derivative thereof <laughs> because you know more about basketball than the coach does? <laughs> no, I haven't done that. Uh, coach, coach is doing a really good job. Coach Andrews is doing a great job of coaching the boys. They won their second state championship this year as sophomores and and doing and getting ready for the the national tournament. So he's doing pretty good. What can you tell us that's not known, Carlos, about the recruitment of you and others in that crazy 2010 free agency time? Oh, it was nuts, man. I mean, obviously, we were trying to decide if we were going to stay where we are. I was with the Utah Jazz or, you know, go on to different situations. I ended up going to Chicago. But uh, great, great recruitment, man. I talked to, you know, five, six, seven different teams in, in different realms and trying to figure out where LeBron was going because obviously he was the big fish that, that summer. Um, he wanted to partner up, obviously, with somebody else. He ended up doing a pretty good job in getting D-Wade and, and, uh, and Bosch to, to go down to Miami with them. So, um, but yeah, it was fun, man. We had a good time. We, we enjoyed, you know, I, I enjoyed the, the free agency process, the recruitment process. Got a chance to go to Chicago and play with some young studs like D Rose and Joe Kim Noah. So had a good time. What do you regard as the most difficult professional decision you've had to make on your choices? Um, I, I would say just trying to decide where a championship could be won. You know, I think I wanted to, there was a huge part of me that wanted to stay in Utah. You know, I spent six years there and built a great rapport with Jerry Sloan and and my and Darren Williams, who was my point guard, another star we had on the team. But we they just, there was something missing. I think we needed like a real big center, you know, like a Marcus Canby or, or, or DeAndre Ayton or someone like that to block shots and rebound. Um, Chicago had all the pieces that I felt like we needed to win a championship. And then obviously D. Rose, him being injured um, was tough. You know, obviously the first year we go all the way to the conference finals, lose to the Heat, and we thought like the next couple of years we'd be in the championship. But um, without our best player, it was very difficult. How often do your sons call up on YouTube uh, the time that you made an and one and swung your fist <laughs> so ferociously in celebration that you hit a referee in the junk? They, they have done that many times. They sent me the video. They were, I think they're hanging out with their buddies, and some of their buddies uh, showed the video to them, so they brought it up. But people, you got to remember, that was a game we were getting blown out in Dallas. Dirk was going crazy, and we actually made a comeback and won that game. So that moment was part of that comeback and uh, was, was a good moment. If you had to choose one game above all others that you remember the most fondly, any point in your career, what one game would that be? Uh, I mean, I would say the gold medal game against Spain, you know, in 2008, winning the gold medal. Very few chances as athletes do we get a chance to represent our country. And that was a very unique moment. We got a chance to, to win the gold medal in Beijing and to kind of revitalize USA being the dominant uh, country for basketball. And that was that was an awesome moment. Jerry Sloan seems like he'd be very difficult to play for. No, oh, quite the opposite. The good thing about Coach Sloan, you know, may he rest in peace, he was a player, right? So I remember one of my first my first conversations with him when I came to the Jazz in 2004 was like, you know, look, I, I'm only, I only want to see you guys for two hours. We're going to practice from 10 to 12 because when I played, I hated going over two hours myself. So he was he was great for he was like one of those guys that was tough minded. He wanted tough players on his roster, so he only recruited those kind of guys. Um, but he was a player, so he knew like you know after two hours, if you go hard for two hours, that's all you really need to to get enough work in. And then at the same time, he was he was an X and O's guy, but he was a your will can carry you kind of guy. So um, I had a great time playing for him.
He always gave off no nonsense coach. And he also gave yeah. off would lather up his chest with a bar of soap and then just use that as shampoo. <laughs> now he was tough, man. I mean, I remember seeing the interview that that um the logo did, Jerry West did, and he and they asked him, you know, who was your toughest opponent? And he was like, you know, going to see Chicago and playing against Jerry Sloan because I would leave that game with all type of bruises on my body. I felt like I was in a war. And that's the kind of respect he, he had amongst his peers. And that's the same way he was as coaching. You know, he, he had that kind of respect because he was no nonsense, took the game very serious. And uh, I really, I really, really enjoy playing for him. Uh, Carlos, I'm I'm hoping you can address something because we've had you on a couple of times and trust yeah. me, I'm doing my best to make sure Dan doesn't ask you about the Beijing again. I'm really working hard. Okay? We did that. Our I know guys. we've done we that. He's going to ask you about Prince. I'm doing my best. I all don't right? have it right now. Like I got, you know what I mean? I got the ball head hat on. I'm doing my best over here I, to play I want to know if Carlos Boozer fired anybody over the, uh, over the Beijing. <laughs> I want to know if anybody. He can't help himself, I man. He did fire I somebody. Did. I did. It's <laughs> the did. same guy. It took me seven. I had to shampoo my hair seven times. <laughs> Uh, you should have done it with a bar of soap like Jerry Sloan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I do want to ask you because uh, social media wasn't really a thing when this happened. No. And I don't think we've ever asked you about this. There was a perception when you signed with Utah that mm. the narrative was on all the blogs, Carlos Boozer, quote, cons a blind man. And, oh, yeah. and uh, I don't really know the particulars surrounding that, but you were made to be a villain and, right. and positioned as a backstabber. What did people get wrong about that situation? You leaving the Cavs and going to Utah? Yeah, well, the reality of it was was I, I was a second round pick, so I had a two year contract with an option for a third year, and they had discussed taking my option away so they could resign me. The only bad thing about that was is it would be tampering, and they were going to be under investigation. So, you know, when we went through the process, they took away my option. They wanted to give me a new contract. Um, the league, the league knows everything, so. When they took away my contract, I mean, my, my third year option, they were going to offer me a deal around $40 million. And, but the league was also getting indication that there was four other teams that were offering me 70 plus. So if I had re-signed, then they would, they would immediately uh, knew that it was tampering, kind of like the Joe Smith situation in Minnesota back in the day. So if I had done that, you know, we had got win, me and my team had got win, that there would be an investigation. So I had to, I had to move on. That's what, that's what the fans didn't know. I had to move on. Otherwise it would, it would have crippled. Um, the, the, the Cavaliers for a couple of years. How uncomfortable was that to go through publicly? Have you had something like that basketball related as uncomfortable? I mean, at the time it was uncomfortable, but I mean, the extra money the Jazz were giving me made it pretty cool. I mean, it ended up working out just fine from that perspective. But, you know, anytime you hear stuff being said about you and not everybody knows all the details and I couldn't really speak about it at the time, um, it is difficult, but you know, we got through it. You know, everything that you go through is a lesson and something to be learned and something to grow from. So what would I you, did that. What would you regard as the year that you felt the greatest pressure playing basketball? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, maybe, I mean, my rookie year, trying to prove myself to everybody was, was, was difficult just because, you know, you come into the league and you get, I got thrown in the fire. I was playing like 30 minutes a night when I started to start after a couple of weeks. And I'm going against, you know, Carl Malone and Tim Duncan and KG and Dirk and Rashid and Jermaine O'Neal and the list goes on. The power forwards when I played, when I first came in the league, were unbelievable. And I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't ready yet. These guys were giving it to me. And so it took me a year or two to be on the level. And then when I made the all-star team a couple of years later, I felt like all the hard work I put in, all those lessons I learned my, my rookie year um, really helped me, motivate me to become a better basketball player. It is said that Tim Duncan's uh, trash talk is surgical in that it's fundamental <laughs> as well and that he'll just tell you you'll miss a block shot by inches and he'll be like a whisper almost to you. Uh, yeah. Do you have a Tim Duncan story that you can tell us? Uh, Timmy, Timmy became a good friend. We played together in 04 uh, on the Olympics, so we spent a couple of months together over the summer. But um, my first, I don't know if it was the exact first game, but one of my first games against Timmy, he gave me like 28, 17, like, I don't know, six or seven block. At the end of the game, he goes, Booze, you're good, but you got to get better, son. That <laughs> was like one of those moments. But it was an honest moment. It was like, dang, it's coming from the great Timmy, Timmy D. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get in the lab and I'm going to get better, Timmy. 
So uh, that was for, for, for me, because we became friends, I got a little bit more than like a one word, you know, a humble brag. It was more like, booze, you're good. But you got to get in the lab, son. So um, it was one of those. But he was great. I mean, he was he really was super fundamental, but that's what made him so terrific. And he was a winner. And I think that's that's what we all wanted to do was be able to win. And he just wasn't the flashy guy. He wasn't, you know, necessarily dribbling behind his back all the time and doing the fancy move that the kids like to see. But he got the job done. And you guys can all attest to that. How about Garnett? Did Garnett have anything to say to you that you were like, that's gibberish. You're a crazy person. Garnett's a whole different monster. KG was very, very talkative, uh, very demonstrative, very passionate. And he let that passion show. I have a couple stories, but I can't really tell no, them all No, the language no, language. No, is come just, on, is, let it fly. It's okay. It's okay. It's not, uh, it's let, a, come just, on, it's okay because it, the host just, says it is. Just, yeah. it's okay, and you could bleep it out yourself if you want to. Bleep, We're bleep, bleep. Uh, but we can't. I'll give bleep. you. I'll give you. I'll give you a quick one. So I'm in Cleveland. It's my first year playing. I'm a rook in Cleveland. I check, I'm coming at this point in the early in the season. I'm coming off the bench. I check into the game. We have a dude starting named Chris Mim. He was our starting starting power forward at the time. And KG's having a tough night. He's like, I don't know what he is. He's like two for seven or two for eight or whatever it is, right? And uh, I come in the game for Chris Mim, who, I, you know, we thought he was doing a great job on him, obviously, because, you know, he's two for seven. So that's a pretty good job on Kevin Garnett. And he's in the prime of his career in Minnesota. And he gets fouled. And that's... And that's the first thing. So he, he's, he like walks up to the to the ball under the basket, grabs a ball. He's like, you know, doing one of these with the ball. And then as he walks back towards the free throw line, the shooter's free throws, he's like, come on, ticket. So I, I can't say what he said, but he's like, this dude can't guard you. He's talking to himself <laughs> and, and like third hear. person, Calls but loud, ticket. En loud enough so <laughs> everybody can hear him. And he called himself Ticket because, you know, his nickname is the Big Ticket. So he'd be like, come on, Ticket. This dude can't guard you. Not in those words. But we all got the gist. And then he, and he ended up having like 35 and 20 at the end of the game. But uh, that's just a quick example of, of, of Kevin Garnett. Back-to-back -back state champs for your sons, the twin boys, yep. uh, Columbus Explorers state champs. How much do they like Coral Gables? Don't they love it? The campus is beautiful. <laughs> Has anyone spoken what to you? What is happening here? Like what are you doing? What are you doing? I saw you, you, I saw, you can't do this. I saw him in the Golden Cane Lounge at the Duke game. What are you and doing? Just, I'm wondering if they, like the, if they like being in Miami. Columbus hop, skipping a jump away. Are you teeing up University of Miami? <laughs> I, I I just so happen to be a booster. Legal? I just so happen to be this a booster. No, I would just I can take illegal. him over for a campus visit, if you'd like. I know Cameron is probably will named after please, Cameron Indoor Stadium, stop, but we can fix that. Will you please stop? You know, if you take out the Adidas scandal <laughs> years, Coach L has a winning record against Duke. <laughs> He's with That's us great. on behalf of Pepsi. Pepsi and DraftKings are yeah. giving you a free shot at a hundred grand. Boozer, tell them how they can do this. My last name is Ruiz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so I teamed up with, with Pepsi Zero, the Pepsi Zero Circuit Challenge to encourage people to, to get zero right. They have their own bracket, the DraftKings Zero Right Bracket Challenge. You get a chance to win $100,000. Uh, by getting the, the incorrect answer, the lowest score will get a chance to win $100,000. Obviously, if you tie with somebody, they'll spread it up accordingly. Um, but it's pretty cool. The zero, the zero Right, there's zero sugar in it. It's supposed to taste amazing. Um, and you can sign up through DraftKings. So sign up, guys, for the DraftKings Zero Right Bracket Challenge. Try to get as many basically incorrect as possible, and the lowest score can win $100,000. Uh, Carlos, thank you for being on with us. Uh, yeah, their games would go so well with North Carolina. Uh, will you knock it off? I didn't ask him about <laughs> Prince. I was furious, Boozer, when I heard that you told Dan Patrick that Prince wired you five hundred grand to ease your mind on that purple salon he put in the house that he was renting from you. You never gave me anything that good, Boozer. I asked you from several different angles. I've asked you how uh, the relationship with Prince went, and you didn't tell me shit. Nothing. <laughs> He had a good jump shot. We shot hoops on top on the on the rooftop. Pretty good jump shot. Uh, My bad, I got you. So does so does Caden, by the way. And you if don't want to come me. by uh, to shut up, the Mike Watts Bryant. Go. Thank you, Carlos. Appreciate your time, sir. Anytime, guys.